For many years now, the WWE and the hardcore wrestling fans have had a very interesting, complex, and I'd say adversarially interdependent relationship. Hardcore fans hate a lot of what Vince McMahon is and what he represents and what his company is and what it represents. There's also that lingering resentment about what the WWE used to be and what it is now, that kind of hope of what it can be yet again, even though a lot of people don't think that it will ever get there. There's still that somewhat eternal optimism that maybe something will cause it to change and something will shake things up and make things better all at the same time. All those same hardcore fans hate the WWE for running everybody else out of town, so to speak, and making the business what it is, but still knowing that if you want big league professional wrestling on a national scale, whether you want to admit it or not, the WWE is really still, frankly, the only show in town, so there is a need there to kind of feel self-validated for being a professional wrestling fan by having somebody like the WWE to watch. Hardcore fans probably won't admit that to themselves, but it is true. And on the flip side, the WWE, for many, many years, has really viewed the hardcore fans as necessary, but an incredibly inconvenient pain in the ass that does not deserve the company's respect or a lion's share of their attention because the hardcore fans are a smaller portion of the wrestling audience, the hardcore fans, as a result, don't speak for the majority, which has been true for many years. That hardcore fans are fickle and, at the end of the day, impossible to please. Yet, at the same point in time, why would you go out of your way to really please them because they love wrestling so much and you really are the only big league show left in town? Let's face it, those hardcore fans are always going to be there. And, and it's true. And it's true a lot about the hardcore fans and how they feel about the company, yet how they still need the company. It's also funny how the WWE is right in a lot of the ways that they think about the hardcore fans, but it's also true that whether or not they always agree or want to admit it, they have always needed them. Maybe not to the level that hardcore fans think that they're needed or deserve to be needed, but needed nonetheless. The ironic thing really in all of this is that in recent years, the WWE and hardcore wrestling fans have grown closer and closer in their relationship. They really truly have. And there's a greater dependency upon each other, a greater respect upon each other, even if neither side wants to fully admit that. It's really ironic as the WWE imposed their will on the business and did all these things to basically eliminate all the competition. Part of what naturally happened was a progression kind of organically in the business going towards smaller and quicker guys that wrestle a much more intense physical type of style, which is kind of what you would see more on the independent scene, which is the type of scene that will typically appeal more to the hardcore fans. As different things have happened and different things have changed in pop culture and in entertainment and what have you, and in television, the company's audience, especially on television in terms of ratings, in terms of viewers, has decreased. So what happens now is there is a greater importance on those hardcore fans because they are a larger percentage, naturally, of your overall fan base because as I referenced earlier, if the hardcore fans are always going to be there and every couple of years you're losing a million or so eyeballs every week on your TV program, if those hardcores aren't leaving, everybody else is in droves. So as a result, naturally, the hardcore audience, the hardcore fan base becomes a much larger segment of the overall wrestling viewing population than they ever have been. And you also look at it too, what's really ironic about it is where the, for years the WWE has always tried to rib the hardcore fans and wanted to shit all over them. You know, they need those hardcore fans to drive their presence on the internet, drive their presence on social media, the Twitters, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the Snapchats, what have you. You know, on top of that, the hardcore fans are really the foundation, the backbone of the subscribers of the WWE Network. Because let's face it, if you're going to pony up 10 bucks a month for the network, you got to be pretty hardcore naturally as a wrestling fan in order to want to be willing to part with $120 a year for the WWE product. I mean, let's face it. So it's really ironic how this has shifted. It's been a very seismic shift in terms of the business where it's been very combative and very adversarial for years between the WWE Vince McMahon and then the hardcore wrestling fans, the hardcore WWE fans, 
they've grown much closer over the past couple of years than I think either party really wants to realize or really wants to accept to where we've gotten to the point now where there's been a major de-emphasis of characters, a major de-emphasis on cultivating and developing stories and good storytelling to the point where you've got that heavy emphasis on the physicality of in-ring action primarily, solely, if not exclusively, to where the WWE in a lot of ways is starting to package and present itself in terms of Raw and SmackDown, in particular on Raw, as an indie fed with some production values. When you watch their product in a lot of ways now, it feels kind of like the type of disjointed, discombobulated mess that some indie feds that happen to have some crappy local TV contract uh, has. That's what they feel like now. The WWE feels like a big time indie fed. The very group that the WWE has rallied against for so many years and issued all these talking points about how wrong the hardcore fan base has been for so many years, it's funny now, the WWE is being booked like it's being booked by hardcore wrestling fans. Because at no point in time in this country company's history, this country's history, has the WWE ever made a more blatant attempt to appeal towards hardcore fans and come more closely in step and in line with the hardcore wrestling fans' desires and tastes than right now in this moment in time. And it's a fact. And I know the WWE in some ways is trying to sell themselves on this concept being a good thing. They see what NXT is and they lose sight of what NXT actually is and they see some of the principles that they've applied on the bigger shows and think that this is a good thing and it's not and then you have the hardcore fans who are being appealed to more and more and selfishly as humans we are selfish beings if a company is going to give you what you feel you want even if you don't always want to admit it's what you want it really is what you want why would you be angry about that why would you be upset about that and more often than not, you're most certainly not going to like some pencil neck geek like me coming on here telling you how shitty and stupid it is because they're giving you exactly what you want. So the WWE has capitulated to the hardcore audience. And the hardcore audience, as a result, is stuck in their own kind of wrestling bubble of bullshit and thinks this is a great and glorious thing. And the WWE, as a result, because they're listening to the hardcore fan base more than they ever have, they have capitulated to lengths that I never imagined were possible. They have now immersed themselves also in a hardcore wrestling bubble cocoon of bullshit and think that everything is swimmingly fine. And it's not. It's a problem. The WWE's approach to business today is a big time problem. Now the crazy thing is, the WWE's exposure, and in particular mainstream exposure, may be in theory as big as it ever has been, if not the biggest it ever has been. Talk about the company's international presence, that's one thing the WWE, I will confess, has done a really good job of over the years is understanding that the U.S. marketplace is not the be-all, end-all, and they needed to become kind of that global international conglomerate, and they've done a very good job of doing that, expanding that international presence. You know, you're talking about this internet age, and WWE can reach people quicker than it ever has been, get to more homes and more people in more places in more ways than it ever has, and those ways will only continue to grow in number and importance as the years go along. You look at the company's relationship with ESPN and TMZ and all the exposure that they get from those type of media outlets, the type of exposure they could only dream of years ago. You would think, in theory, that this would be a huge boon to the WWE and would equal a growth, an explosion rate of growth, if anything else, in terms of the audience. But the fact is, is while the potential vessel for an audience has grown in size and scope and in terms of the variety of ways that the product can be delivered to the masses, the company is getting a diminishing return on that increased growth and exposure due to, in large part, its lack of mass appeal. 
And the simple fact is, is that while on the one hand, the hardcore fans love the appeal the WWE has made to them in recent years because it going towards what they like. Why wouldn't they like it? I can't blame them for liking it. Why wouldn't you like if the company's given you what you've been bitching at them to give you for so many years, or at least you think they have? You know, you're naturally going to think it's a good thing, but it really isn't. You look at it from a company standpoint and from a product standpoint. This emphasis on what hardcore fans want and this shift to being an indie fed with some production values has been disastrous to the WWE in terms of its domestic television viewership. I want to I want to throw out some numbers at you really quickly, just some rounded off type of numbers. July 30th, 2012 Raw, shortly after the 1000th episode of Raw, shortly after Raw expanded to three hours every week. They did four and a half million viewers on average over the span of three hours. August 30th, 2016, the company averaged 3.4 million viewers. And you had people on the interwebs trying to sell this like this was an improvement, that this was a good thing, uh, Kevin Owens equals ratings and all this. Ah, shut the fuck up. Over the span of four years, the company has lost over a million viewers. And that 3.4 million number, that's not the WWE going up against the NFL or anything like that. That's their number. That's their reality. The sad thing is, is four years ago, that July 30th number, they were going up against the 2012 London Olympics. They did over a million viewers more going up against the Olympics four years ago than they currently did in Ju at the end of August 2016 not going against the Olympics. And part of that, you have to surmise, has to be a reflection of the product and what has changed. You look at some of the people that are being pushed. You're not pushing the guys like the John Cena's and the Randy Orton's as much. You're pushing the guys like the Dean Ambrose's and the Seth Rollins and the Dolph Ziggler's and the Finn Balor's and the like. While the hardcore fans get all their panties up in a tizzy because they're like, oh, he's, he's not about size, he's not about size. It's not solely about size. But ding dong, dumb dicks, there is a part of this equation where size does matter. And when you have made this seismic shift towards this type of size and type of performer and the type of performers that they are and the type of work that they do, the proof is in the pudding. The ratings continue to go down. If at least, if nothing else, from a television viewership standpoint alone, you cannot dispute that the change in the types of talent and the types of philosophy of how those talent are utilized have contributed greatly to the diminishing viewership of Raw every single week. And part of that is because of the type of guys they are, how big, or in a lot of cases, how big they are not, how they look, how they act, how they wrestle, it's all of that. And don't give me that shit up, it's a blame the company and the this and the that. A lot of the company stories and characters were crap four years ago and they were still doing over a million viewers more. So while everybody wants to shit on the big shows and the Canes and the Cenas and the Ortons, clearly in terms of television viewership, a lot more people gave a blue fuck about them than they do about fucking Finn Balor and the rest of these ass hats. And what happens as a result? As the WWE and the hardcore fans kind of get in this symbiotic cocoon of wrestling bullshit, now you get the WWE trying to sit there and convince themselves that everything is okay and trying to compensate for this continual loss of television viewership and newsflash, this is not a good thing. I realize there are other elements to the business, network subscribers, merchandise sales, live event attendance, the sponsorships that you get, what have you. But at the end of the day, the center of that web, the focal point of everything that everything feeds into and feeds off of is the television show. It is the television show. It's a lie all the big deal a couple of years ago about the company getting the big extension of the television contract where they under-delivered with the USA Network because that's still the backbone, the nuts and bolts of everything. Now, as that nuts and bolts is becoming less and less important and less and less of a big deal because of the way the WWE and cahoots with the fucking hardcore audience have fucking made it, now the company has to compensate in other ways, and that leads to overexposure as compensation for the lack of gross audience. It's trying to bleed that turnip dry. It is trying to sit there and get everybody as invested in it as possible. 
And this seems like, in theory, it could work, because a hardcore fan is going to care more if you get them engaged. The hardcore fan is going to sit there and do this. The hardcore fan is going to watch more. They are going to consume more of your product. They are going to consume more of this. They're going to buy more of your merch and all this other crap. But here's what happens. It leads to a dilution of the product. The WWE, as a result, tried to compensate by going to the brand split. They're selling this as the fact that they can have more pay-per-views and more live events. It gives more content for the network and all this other highfalutin crap. We've been down this path before. If the brand split ended up being a bad thing from a product standpoint a few years back. What the fuck's going to make it any different now? On top of that, what happens is it stretches the company thin and it stretches the wrestling fan thin too. I don't care how hardcore the hardcore audience is, at the end of the day, there's only so much wrestling you can take in, there's only so much you could do. At some point in time, it's going to grind on you, it's going to wear on you. And it's going to be one of those situations where eventually you start to tune out because you get stretched too thin and it starts to lose its impact and meaning to you. The WWE right now, from a business standpoint, is once again in a mold, motto, excuse me, in a mode, if you will, that they frankly have been in for years, where it's about quantity over quality. It's talking about how big they are and all the different things that they do and trying to squeeze that turnip dry. But what happens as a result, when you focus too much on your size, when you focus too much on the quantity, and you don't emphasize the value and the quality of what you have, you really stretch yourself too thin, and you really start to put yourself in a very bad situation where you could be very vulnerable to some bad decisions and some bad mistakes, and it really could have more negative consequences across the entire corporate ladder. When you think about this from an empire type of standpoint, and the WWE from the professional wrestling business's standpoint is an empire. It is. Some of the greatest empires throughout history collapsed in part, in part, not solely, not exclusively, but in part because they stretched themselves too damn thin. They got too big. It was about the quantity of the empire, not the quality of the empire. Eventually, it led to weakened borders. It led to armies being stretched out too thin, resources being stretched out too thin. The similar things can apply here in the business world. And we've seen this with the WWE over the years. When they start to venture away from their core competencies, the professional wrestling business, and they get into the bodybuilder federations, and they get into WWF Times Square restaurants, and they get into WWE studios. These things become financial sinkholes, and they end up having negative connotations throughout the entire company. And it's because the WWE is getting away from the nuts and bolts of who they are. They're trying to compensate for deficiencies in other areas, in this case in part television viewership, by expanding themselves so much and stretching themselves so thin that it's creating huge problems. And a lot of the hardcore fans are sure not going to sit there and say anything about it because they're getting a lot of what they want right now. And at the end of the day, the problem with this too, not just from a product standpoint, but more importantly from a business standpoint, is it leads to the company doing what they've continued to have for years as a philosophy. It's all about short term versus the long term. Who gives a shit where we are three or five years from now? we got to worry about this next fiscal quarter and what type of dividend we're going to deliver to the shareholders. we got to worry about earnings reports and revenue reports. We're running a stock. We're not running a company. And indeed, there is a big difference. And that's part of the problem with a Vince McMahon and a Stephanie McMahon and others in that company having so much of their personal wealth tied up into the stock when in doubt, they're going to take care of themselves, and I don't blame them, but they are going to run the stock before they are going to run the company. So at this point in time, the easiest and quickest way for them to get that short-term fix and be able to survive from one quarter to the next is to stretch themselves incredibly thin, is to sit there and do this ridiculous-ass brand split, is to sit there and do more pay-per-views and further diminish the quality of the product, and in the meantime, appeal to those hardcore fans because they're the easiest ones to appeal to because they're already there because they're not going any fucking where. I don't see how so many hardcore fans think this company is doing great things and are so excited about all these guys like Ambrose and Rollins and Finn Balor and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn getting pushes and being heavily featured. You know, it's okay if one or two of these guys are in there. You mix things up. Everybody need something. If you have something for everyone, it could be really, really good. The problem is now, you have something for a very small segment that unfortunately has grown to be a larger overall segment of your viewing population, in part because you've run off so many other goddamn viewers. 
So you've got this voice here, the hardcore wrestling fans, who in a lot of ways, they don't like the comparison, but it is who they fucking are. If you look at the WWE like the Republican Party, the hardcore fans are the Tea Party. They're the ones whose volume is the loudest, whose voices grow the most. But at the end of the day, they're not the ones to carry you to victory. They're not the ones alone that you want to rely upon because there is a whole segment of the population, a majority of the population, that ain't on board with these asshats and won't get down with these asshats. And if you follow these asshats, especially from a national and international standpoint, you're going to end up sorry. Sorry. But the WWE is running their business as if they are taking the Donald Trump approach of, hey, let's not try to get 50% of the more of the vote. Let's just focus on ramping up the 40% that we got and figure out ways to divert this other 60% away from Hillary Clinton. As long as we get to 40%, we're good. That's less than half. And it's like the WWE in a lot of ways is running their company like a Donald Trump campaign right now. They're just going all in on this one small segment and the WWE does all this numbers manipulation and all this other bubble bullshit to convince themselves it's good. The hardcore fans feel like they're getting what they want so they're going to try and convince everybody else it's fucking good and at the end of the day it's not. It's an absolute fucking disaster for both the product and the company as a whole. So, let me reemphasize this again because sometimes we have listening problems so I want to make sure this is clear. I do not blame hardcore wrestling, hardcore WWE fans for this approach, this change in shifting philosophy and approach of the WWE that will prove to be a disaster and already is kind of a disaster. Because at the end of the day, if you're a hardcore fan, as many of you have told me over the past almost what, six damn years now, the cocksuckers have sit there and said, I don't care about the business aspect of it, just give me wrestling. That's what I want to wrestle. Well, you know, the company isn't fucking doing anything to try and create interesting stories or interesting characters. By God, all you've got is the in-ring action. You've been programmed to desensitize for so many years to think that all these flips and kicks and floppy, choppy, sloppy fucking matches are any goddamn good. You know, and the company's giving it to you, and that's what you want. Then why would you complain? It doesn't mean it's any fucking good. It doesn't mean the product's good. And it still most certainly doesn't mean it's good for the business. And to live in this fantasy world that you're going to sit there and do bigger and better things than you have in fucking 15 years on the backs of Finn Balor and Kevin Owens. Get the fuck out of here. You can live in your own little cocoon of wrestling hardcore bullshit and enjoy that. That's fine. Just don't expect other rational thinking people to sit there and think that this is something great or wonderful, because it's not. The product is as bad as it's ever been, if not worse. I intentionally consume less and less of the WWE all the time, in part because the company has shifted their approach and philosophy more and more to be in a crappy indie fed with mediocre production values. They don't even put in great effort in the production values anymore. But again, this is not the hardcore fans fault. At the end of the day, how are you going to blame the customers for what the business does and the decisions the business makes? No, at the end of the day, this is the business's fault. And the WWE deserves what they fucking get. If they're going to be stupid enough to always try to come up with their own corporate bullshit excuses as to why their audience from a television standpoint continues to dwindle, if all they want to sit there and do is continue to run a stock price and be stuck in their toiling cycle of mediocrity, then so fucking be it. But that doesn't mean it's good for the business short term, and it most certainly doesn't mean it's going to be good for the business long term. Like I said a few years ago when they did the brand split, they had a place ahead of time, and then it kept going too damn long, and it ultimately didn't work. There's a reason the company went away from it. They didn't just do it out of the goodness of the product. There were reasons for it. So now a couple years later, we go back to doing the same goddamn thing that ultimately long-term failed before? Why? Because we have to figure out another way to compensate for the lack of audience, the loss of audience, and what will be a continuing loss of audience during the football season. I mean, look at that. In a four-year stretch, you lost over a million viewers. And that four years ago number was right after the company went to a three-hour Raw, so a lot of people still weren't used to the fact that it was a three-hour Raw, and they were going head-to-head -head against the London 2012 Olympics. And they still drew over a million viewers. 
emphasizing ding-dongs like John Cena and Randy Orton. Yes, you had CM Punk and Daniel Bryan and AJ Lee in the mix, but you also had freaking Alberto Del Rio on Big Show and Kane and all these fucks. Now we have went to all the indie heroes, beyond the CM Punks and the Daniel Bryans, who were actually pretty good talents, who went to the mediocre guys like Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose and Finn Balor and Kevin Owens and good Christ almighty Sami Zayn. Think about how stupid this company is. They would sit there if given their druthers and do what the hardcore fans would fucking do and at some point in time book Sami Zayn versus Finn Balor in the main event of a major WWE pay-per-view. Who's booking that crap at the end of the day? More importantly, who's going to watch that crap besides hardcore fans? This is the company's fault. This is a disaster. I can't believe that, yeah, I can believe this company would be that stupid to the point it's almost like they've capitulated to the hardcore fans. It's almost like they've caved. They've given in. Instead of sitting there and asking for help and saying, we don't know what the fuck we're doing, but we know it's not good, they've dug in their heels stubbornly more than they ever have, just like <laughs> their adversaries now, comrades in arms, the hardcore fans, and say, we're right, we believe in the righteousness of our rightness, and by God, we're going to get to the promised land of a 1.0 rating. You keep that shit up, it's going to happen sooner rather than later. And what's the excuse going to be then? You're going to look in the comment section of this video, and you're going to see all types of attempts to diminish what I've said here. You see all types of excuses and bullshit and blame this and blame that. At the end of the fucking day, it proves that old point once and for all. If you only appeal to the hardcore fans of professional wrestling, it will be a disaster for you as a company, especially if you're trying to be a mainstream wrestling fed. Well, the WWE is still kind of pretending to want to be a mainstream wrestling fed. And all they're doing now is solely appealing to the hardcore audience. And look what that's meant for the business. Look at what it's meant for viewership. You take your merchandise sales and shove them up your ass. You see the network subscribers, how much has that number really changed over the past two years? They're at a break-even point with that network. They were supposed to have twice the subscriber amount that they do now. And imagine if they didn't have the international subscribers, what that number would actually look like. You know, I don't mind if the WWE appeals some to the hardcore fans, throws them some bones here and there, because they're your customers too. And they, and they should have some capitulation. You know, They've stuck through a lot of this bullshit that this company's put out there over the years. They should have something to be happy about every once in a while. But you shouldn't be booking the product and writing the product as if you are the hardcore fan base. Many, many years ago, the Marks used to be the ones that were in the seats. Now, unfortunately, the Marks are the ones in the ring, backstage, in the gorilla position, and in the creative meetings. And they're booking this shit like they're the Marks in the seats, and it's a disaster. Admit it. It's not good. And it's not getting any better and not going to get any better. And it's just a shame to see what has happened to the wrestling business. Imagine if you were back in 1999-2000. And then you put yourself in a time capsule and said, Do not open until September of 2016. And you're coming out rocking your NWO shit with a Stone Cold Steve Austin vest and some type of Mick Foley book in your frickin' hand, and you come out to this. This is the WWE of today. Just think about how sad and pathetic that really is.